again. Hi, Dana Abercrombie, The Coalition. Absolutely fantastic series. What I really wanted to know is, I love the fact that Mel is taking charge of her life, but I was wondering, do you feel that it is a matter of determination or convenience being the fact that she is using someone else's identity? Good question. Let me think, give you a real answer. <laughs> I think it's one of determination because she makes an active choice to take a credit card that isn't hers because it's going to allow her to take the risk that she can't afford to take. It is a bad decision, um, but I think it's coming from the spirit of, I want to do something new, but I don't feel like I have the means to do it. Um, so it is definitely a bad decision, but definitely one of determination, not convenience. I wanted to also talk about the balance of, we have the the airport situational comedy aspect of it, but we're also following Mel and her life and what she's doing. How do you balance those two where they both interconnect, but at the same time, you can view it also separately? Yeah, I think we really kind of were very intentional about that. What we did was kind of place, we had her work life, we have her friend life in Rory there, we have her love life also there. Um, and so we really wanted to populate that world so we could spend time um, having the airport as a backdrop to those stories. And then, yeah, we wanted to show us a little slice of home because I think developing that personal life with her friends and the people she's meeting as she kind of takes new risks in her life was also really important. So hopefully you'd see that develop more in a season two. There, there's also a lot of within that friend group, especially dealing with Alex the relationship and the past history that they have. I was wondering, by using that as a sense of regret, do you feel that that was also used as a determination in order for her to kind of better her life and get out of that stuck mode that it seems like she is in? A hundred percent, yeah. I think like having Alex right there, having Alex having moved on right in front of her eyes, um, I think it does force her to really get unstuck by any means necessary and even what you might say is making a decision in the wrong direction but yet it's still better than being where she was at least that's what Mel thinks and so I think it definitely was one of determination. I love the title of this of how to die alone and it seems like she's actively trying to not die alone and so with that can you talk about the multiple because it seems like there's multiple kind of reasons or examples of, of her not, you know, how to not die alone yeah. with that. And did you use that title as more of the, here's these examples, or was it more of, let me engage you in to this, this world that we're in? I think the title was, it's definitely like tongue in cheek. And mm -hmm. what we do is when we meet Mel, it's like you're watching someone who will kind of die lonely if she doesn't make any changes. And over the course of the series, you're gonna watch someone who's going to learn how to not die alone. So we really do make a distinction between those two things and that alone isn't a bad thing. Um, you can be alone and still have a circle of friends around you. We meet Elise in the first episode. She's a woman who dies alone, but dies happy. Um, and so we're really kind of exploring, because I think for so many people, alone is a scary word. We're, we're saying like, lonely is a scary word because it nods to a longing for something different. But I think there is a world where you can be alone like Elise in our pilot and still die very um, happy. There was a very important kind of conversation without any spoilers, but it does show an example of what is it like to be a friend to someone else who doesn't really have any other friends. Yes. And so well, can you talk about the importance of showing that? Is it, do you view that as a burden to carry? Could, um, can you ask the question again? Like which piece, Elise or? Of, of Rory, because oh. he's, he's truly like the only friend. And it seems to be a burden to me. There's that conversation that it's had. Yes. So yeah. Can you kind of explain, it was very important that people see that. So kind of the reasoning of that entire conversation. 
Yeah, I think it is. It's like actually the relationship besides Mel's relationship with herself, the relationship with Rory is really central to Mel's journey because I think Rory feels the pressure of kind of being her safety blanket, um, kind of being the reason that she stays in every Friday night. And so breaking Mel free of that, even if it happens in a very messy way between her and Rory was really important for us. And then kind of lastly, what I wanted to know is you have a lot of different characters that is going on and they have their own separate lives. Kind of putting that together, but never losing that original narrative. How do you decide which character is best to branch off into something, a little bit of, of their story? Oh, yeah. Um, I think you have to always come. I like to write from theme. So in terms of what we're exploring, it's like which character is going to allow us to explore something that builds upon what we're already doing. So for example, Rory is, is meeting someone that he really cares about for the first time. That's a way to explore how not to die alone. Um, and so he's a perfect example of a character with, with whom to branch off with. Same with Mel's brother who we'll meet in later episodes. Um, he is in a relationship, but kind of maybe making some mistakes around it or not. Um, so that was another way, but we really kind of always bring it back to who is going to shed a different kind of light on the thing we're going to say. Wonderful. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Absolutely superb series. Thank you, Dana. Thanks for meeting with me.